Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, I hope you are all doing well and nicely coping with the uh, this situation, uh, and you're washing your hands and not touching, you know, your face, and do the uh, social distancing as we are required to do. Uh, anyways, uh, this is my first uh, video, guys, after this uh, situation. Um, and I've actually, by jokingly, I've called these uh, Corona videos uh, and some other videos I made for Dynamics course. Anyways, uh, so uh, I uh, just wanted to show you the equations for the basic citations. I have a video actually, which is already posted on Blackboard and I'm gonna send you the link soon to that, which has actually uh, the, all the equations that you need based on the frequency ratio and also an example of it. And I'm going to actually make another example which is related to the uh, what we call force transmissibility. But uh, let me just uh, kind of uh, summarize what we have done so far. You guys remember that in the class before the break, a few weeks before the break, we talked about, we started the discussion of the uh, harmonic excitation. So first we had just a mass spring subjected to a harmonic force. And um, we uh, come up with the equations. For that particular situation, we got both uh, the uh, transient and uh, particular solution, uh, or uh, you know, homogeneous and particular, which is known as transient and steady state. And you guys remember the, about the resonance. And we said, oh, resonance is dangerous for the systems. When, we have only the mass and the spring. But then we talked about a more uh, practical situation. So let me just put K and C here. Uh, so it was pretty much the same system we have, but the excitation was coming uh, applied to the mass. Uh, it was a harmonic excitation. Remember the omega dr driving frequency? And then we came up with what? With the solution, but not the complete solution. It was the just the steady state solution. And to us, the, the amplitude of the steady solution was in uh, steady state uh, solution was important, or so-called the uh, steady state amplitude. Okay, so now, what what if the uh, the excitation comes from the base right here? So the base uh, given by this uh, equation y of t is the input, uh, right, and y is given as what uh, some uppercase. Uh, y sine omega b t uh, and omega b is the uh, frequency of the base just like the driving frequency in a way and uppercase y is the amplitude of the base okay and what we, we are trying to find is the output how much the mass is going to move uh, but again we are only interested in the steady state solution Okay, so in other words, the steady state solution, which would be some amplitude x that we are trying to find. That's what we are trying to find. Okay, so just to give you an idea, in the, in the class I mentioned that the base excitation is a good example, is what if, you know, your, a car is driving on a bumpy road, but the bumpy road is like a sine wave, right? So this is the excitation actually coming from the, uh, the base. So actually the, this amplitude, uppercase y, the base amplitude is this. And this omega b is the frequency of this sine wave. Okay? So the excitation coming from the base. So what I did here, I just drew a free body diagram of the mass. And I just showed you the free body diagram of the base. But that's not really important in our, um, you know, equations. Uh, so here, uh, say if x is larger than y, right? Uh, in that case, uh, the, the the force of the spring is going to be k times x minus y, the relative uh, position. And then similarly, the force of the damper will oppose that, uh, you know, mo motion and would be downward and would be c times the relative velocity, x dot minus y dot. Okay, uh, and forget about the base right now, the free body diagram of the base. I just drew that so that you see later on we'll talk about uh, force transmissibility. Anyways. Uh, F equal MA, so you see that these two forces are negative right here, right? Equal MX double dot, mass times acceleration of the uh, the mass. So 
I kept all the X's on this side, on the left side. I took all the Y's to the other side. Uh, then I actually said, oh, what is Y dot? See, we need Y dot here. What is Y dot? Y dot is the derivative of this guy, which becomes Y omega B times uh, cosine omega B T, right? So then I plug that in here, right? And then I normalize it. You guys remember that we normalize it. And uh, just remember that these terms like zeta was defined as what? Zeta was the ratio of C divided by 2M omega N, right? And omega N is what? The square root of K over M, right? So that's where these equations come from. So now the question is, what is the solution to this? But not uh, the complete solution, but rather just the steady state solution. So what we are looking for, sorry, I have to flatten this. Uh, so I hope the noise is not changing. But anyways, so we want the steady state solution. And the steady state solution would be of the form eventually of some x of t, some amplitude x, which I was talking about here, times some uh, sine or cosine, since the input was a sine wave, we'll go with the sine, omega b t minus some other angle, I don't know, beta, since we have used phi so many times. Okay, so in the next video, which I'm going to uh, uh, give you the link, hopefully in an email soon, you will see how we can find X. And then we're going to talk about what uh, is known as the, uh, the ratio of the amplitude of output to input. And that's known as the uh, displacement transmissibility or magnification factor. So stay tuned and um, I send you the link and hopefully I'm gonna actually send you the, uh, the solution to the uh, second exam uh, as an email. So you see, you already have seen your grade, I'm sure by now, but uh, you'll see um, how, you know, if you made any mistake, what was those mistakes. So guys, stay uh, safe and uh, Stay warm. Is it snowing right now a little bit? And uh, I'll come back with another video. All right. Thanks for watching and listening.